I'm Eddie Muller. Thanks for watching TCM on this special holiday. When Noir Alley started three years ago, I knew this day was inevitable. Hollywood's most noir-stained maternal melodrama being broadcast on Mother's Day. It's Mildred Pierce, made at Warner Brothers in 1945. Now, if you're familiar with the film, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're seeing Mildred Pierce for the first time, well, you're about to meet one of the most memorable rags-to-riches women in the movies, noir or otherwise. And if you don't believe Mildred Pierce is noir, I'll ask you this. How many classics of the genre tell tales of a successful man who sacrifices everything for that special woman, only to realize she's just a selfish, no-good vixen? In this case, the femme fatale who wraps the heroine around her little finger is Mildred's own daughter. In most noir, the family is threatened by some stray outside force disrupting their domesticity. Here, the cancer is Mildred's own flesh and blood. Happy Mother's Day. Mildred Pierce is based on a novel of the same name by James M. Cain, published in 1941. Cain is one of the seminal writers of noir fiction. His Depression-era novels, The Postman Always Rings Twice and Double Indemnity, are cornerstones of the noir ethos. They were written after Cain, a former newspaper man, had tried and failed to make it as a screenwriter in pre-code Hollywood. Both were slim, hard-boiled volumes revolving around adultery and murder. Mildred Pierce was something very different. It was Cain's magnum opus, a saga by his standards, about business, family, opera, and the California dream, centered around a divorced woman with an indomitable entrepreneurial drive and the maternal instincts of a mama bear. There were plenty of larcenous and lecherous characters in the story, but in a change of pace for Kane, none of them committed murder. Producer Jerry Wald would have none of that once he saw the success Billy Wilder scored with Double Indemnity in 1944, Wald aimed at replicating it, setting up a movie version of Mildred Pierce at his home base, Warner Brothers. Now, he was gaining a rep as the studio's most driven and dynamic producer, and he hired a series of writers to adapt the novel, which, unlike the bullet-shot narratives of Postman and Double Indemnity, was a sprawling story that spanned several years. To goose things up, Wald insisted a murder set the story in motion and that it be told in flashback, a device lifted directly from the double indemnity script by Wilder and Raymond Chandler. Kane himself took an unsuccessful crack at it, as did Warner's contract writer, Thames Williamson, before Wald assigned Catherine Turney to give the story a woman's sensibility. She wrestled a script into shape, but eventually resisted Wald's murder mystery setup and left the project forever regretting having her name taken off the credits. Another draft was by William Faulkner, which Wald rejected out of hand. All that's left from his version is the character of Lottie, the housekeeper played by Butterfly McQueen. Ranald McDougall, who'd written Objective Burma for Wald the previous year, he did the final draft. A young working-class writer from a poor family, McDougall understood what made Mildred run. He kept most of Turney's work, injected the film's most tragic element, and gave Wald the murder he wanted. Now, while all these drafts were being crafted, Wald made the most crucial decision of all, asking Joan Crawford to screen test for the lead. Normally, that would be an insult to a star of Crawford's magnitude, but she'd recently been dumped from her contract at MGM, and by the time Mildred Pierce was released, Crawford hadn't been on screen in two years. That's how much her star had dimmed. Betty Davis and Ann Sheridan had already turned down the role, and Barbara Stanwyck, who saw herself as Mildred Incarnate, desperately wanted it. But like a great producer, the obsessively meticulous Jerry Wald wasn't afraid to gamble once in a while. He chose Crawford to star, and the rest, as they say, is history. Well, it's history thanks also to the exceptional work of the studio's top director, Michael Curtiz, the gorgeous cinematography of Ernest Haller, 
and the pitch-perfect performances from the entire cast, Bruce Bennett, Eve Arden, Jack Carson, Zachary Scott, and most crucially, 17-year-old Anne Blythe as Vita, a daughter who would break any mother's heart. She and Eve Arden were both nominated for the Best Supporting Actress Oscar, and of course, Joan Crawford's comeback began with her winning the Academy Award for her portrayal of the title character. And here she is, Mildred Pierce.